concept in foreign tax credit is that only the taxpayer liable for the credit gets the credit and only when he becomes liable. This can sometimes be difficult to determine since foreign rules and U.S. rules are quite different in this area. There used to be a lot of fun planning techniques to manipulate these differences. But Congress enacted rules requiring matching of credits with U.S. income for what are called stripping transactions. Those are for the advanced course. The amount of foreign tax credit before limitation is the amount paid or accrued translated to U.S. dollars. This paid or accrued language means the same here as elsewhere that it's used for U.S. tax law. A cash basis taxpayer gets the credit when paid and a accrual basis taxpayer gets it when accrued. There's an exception though for individuals. An individual make, may make a one-time permanent election to claim foreign tax credit on an accrued basis without changing anything else to accrual basis. A lot of other countries don't have the same estimated tax payment requirements we do, and withholding only applies to wages. So this election can be very beneficial in matching up credits with income as determined on the U.S. return. Creditable taxes don't include deferred tax. Under U.S. tax concepts, accrued means the liability for an amount has become fixed and the amount can be reasonably determined. A deferred tax fails one or both of these tests. Thus, financial statement tax provisions may not reflect the amount of a foreign tax for which a credit can be claimed. There's no credit until it hits the current provision, and then it's subject to the adjustment procedure we'll talk about in a minute. Very few foreign taxes are payable in U.S. dollars, so the amount must be translated to dollars. This translation is done at the average exchange rate for the year. The IRS has a lot of rates on its website and links to several other sources of exchange rates. There are some translation exceptions though. If the tax is paid before the accrual year or more than two years after the end of the accrual year, then that tax must be translated at the spot rate on the date of payment rather than the average rate for the tax year. If there's an additional payment due to adjusting the amount accrued or a different translation rate, then it is also translated at the spot rate on date of payment. If a taxpayer gets a refund of foreign taxes claimed as credits, that refund is translated at the same rate as used to record the initial credit. Here's an example. Fredco Inc. accrued UK tax in its tax year ending in 2013 and ultimately paid the amount accrued on October 2nd, 2015. If Fredco's tax year was the calendar year, ending December, then that payment in October is within two years of the end of the 2013 year and the average rate is used for 2013. But there's another exception I'll discuss in a moment. If Fred Coe's tax year ended September 30th before that October payment, then the payment was more than two years after the end of the tax year and the spot rate on October 2nd applies. This can pose some difficulties. If the dollar amount of the tax changes after the tax return is filed, for whatever reason, the taxpayer may need to adjust foreign taxes.
This requirement to adjust applies for anything that changes the dollar amount of the U.S. tax. This includes uh, accrual to return adjustments, refunds, and exchange rate differences when the average rate can't be used. Redetermination could be by an assessment being made or a refund being paid by a foreign government. It could also be the result of the taxpayer paying the tax when there was a different exchange rate in effect and paying it outside that two-year window for using the average rate. If there's additional tax due, interest must be paid on the additional tax. Uh, but not all adjustments or redeterminations require an amended return. If the adjustments didn't impact tax in the year, then no amended return is required. Further, an adjustment that merely changes the balances in pools of tax for deemed paid credits doesn't require adjusting current U.S. tax if there's anything left in the pool. We'll discuss these deemed paid credits and pools in the next segment. If the adjustment impacted U.S. tax, an amended return or notice to the IRS must be filed within 180 days of the date the foreign tax is redetermined. In the next segment, we'll cover the deemed paid foreign tax credit for corporations. But first, here's another quiz.